So let's start with <clears throat> the outline of the lecture. So we're going to have four parts, but probably for this meeting, we're just going to be up until 4.2. And then 4.3 and 4.4 would be on the next meeting. Okay, so let's go to your share and moment um, in Beams. <clears throat> so Beams are usually straight members. So those are the elements that you can found that you can find rather in uh, buildings. So probably in uh, simple, in simpler terms. So those are the horizontal members that you can see in higher rise structures. And uh, beams can be um, further defined as girders. So girders, if those are connecting to uh, your columns. <clears throat> so probably in a simple manner, you can just try to imagine that the beam, the one that is holding the beam is the girder. And the one that is holding the slab or the floor is the beam. So sabi saya pa kung asa magpatong ang inyong slab or inyong floor at magpatong ang inyong slab sa beam. Ang beam mo patong sa girder, ang girder is musumpay sa column. So nana na siya pag ako pag explain. <clears throat> okay, so um beams are loaded perpendicular to its longitudinal axis. So of course the the longer axis has the load, and most likely it's the load coming from the slab. That's why most of the um, <clears throat> later on when you go to reinforce concrete, most of the uh, load that could be applied to your beams are uniformly distributed. Okay, so beams are primarily designed to resist bending. So more ruler, diba? So by young bend, it, it might be positive bend, it may be negative bending. So we have here again to recall we have samples of statically determinate beams. So again, these are statically determinate because um, as you can see in the diagram, the unknowns is lesser than the given equilibrium equations. Okay. <clears throat> so you so <clears throat> so two unknowns against three equilibrium equations. So meaning it is statically determinate. So same goes here. You only have two unknowns, and then we have three. So it is determinate. So again, here is two against three. So again, the three here is the equilibrium equations, which is summation forces vertical, sum summation forces horizontal, and summation of moments equal to zero. So on the other hand, what we have discussed on the last topic, which is about indeterminate <coughs> Um, elements. So as you can see here, you have uh, three unknowns. So this one is a prop beam. So actually this one is four because since this one is fixed, so you still have a horizontal load that is that you need to find out. But again, since there's no horizontal load in the prop beam, so probably the horizontal load is zero, but still it's not sufficient to solve for the unknown elements in your prop beam. So again, that's four is greater than three. <clears throat> okay, so <clears throat> that is indeterminate. And then this one is, uh, you have six unknowns against three equations. So again, six, because you still have a horizontal component in the fixed aspect of your restrained beam. 
So same goes here. So you have four unknown reactions. <clears throat> and again, you only have three equilibrium equations. <clears throat> okay, so this one is just a review. So internal forces in beam is that if you're trying to get the shear and moment equations, so what you have to do is to take a certain distance and try to cut it and analyze it using uh, simple mathematics or simple algebra equations. So for example, uh, before we go to the equations, let's try to cut it first uh, on a certain distance x. And for this cut version, this one is shown below in A. So again, the reactions is um, you have a reaction one and then the cut portion here, this portion here, that is where you will find your internal shear and moment. So as presented in figure A, so this one is the moment, M and the V. So again, this is uh, pertaining to the longer method that we're going to discuss. <clears throat> okay, and then on the other hand, it's quite the opposite. So. Why is it the opposite? Because again, if you try to um, if you try to make a balance equation, so of course um, it should be equilibrium on the right side. It should be equilibrium on the left side. So for a while. Okay, so again, um, <clears throat> um, it, it doesn't matter where you're going to um, analyze your cut section, whether from left or right, as long as you know how to create your notations, okay? You know how to create your uh, moments. So probably you know why this moment is counterclockwise, because if you take moment about this point, the moment uh, due to R1 would be going clockwise, diba? so you need counterclockwise moment to counteract that force. And then the shear is going downwards because, again, reaction one is going upwards. So I hope that you can also analyze the equilibrium parts on the right side of the beam. <clears throat> okay, so. <clears throat> So let's start with shear force. So, so let's say we have cut a certain distance x. And then the first thing that we need to do is to establish a shear, shear equation. So shear equation first and then moment equation later. So the purpose of creating shear and moment equations is later on, once we have, an, uh, once we have created those equations, we'll be creating the shear and moment diagram. And the importance of this one is the distribution of shear all throughout the span of the beam and also for the moment as well. So you're going to have a diagram <clears throat> where you can see the distribution of the, of the shear force throughout the beam and also a diagram for the moment that, um, that spans throughout the beam also. So you can explain the behavior of the, the shear and moment through the diagram. <clears throat> okay, so first is we have to take the notations of your summation of forces vertical. So you have to take note of this one. So again, um, it's in your prerogative. <clears throat> it's in your prerogative where, whether you're going to make the upward force positive or the up or the downward force uh, positive. So you have to declare it in your equation. Okay, so summation of forces vertical on the left side is equal to the shear. So it's not equal to zero because again, we are looking for the shear that we have cut through the beam. So again, it's not zero because um, <clears throat> we're looking for, so probably it's still zero, but this one is, um, we, are, we are analyzing the, the force on the, on the shear aspect. 
So probably this one is still equal to zero, but um, if you try to write it down, minus V, so you still have to con uh, transpose the V on the right side. Okay. <clears throat> so on the right side, that would be a, on a positive shear also, but again, it's positive on the right side because through the equilibrium um, equations. So again, as presented on the previous slide, so even though that we are, we are analyzing it from left to right, I mean, left part and the right portion, <clears throat> the notation for your <clears throat> um, shear would still be the same on the left and the right. So para di maglibog, um, for example, earlier on the previous slide, this one, so if you cut it on the left and then your shear is going downwards, all you have to do is to make it opposite on the right side of the beam. So same goes for the moment <clears throat> counterclockwise. <clears throat> so but again, simpler terms lang siguro if you don't want to analyze it really. Okay. So para I combine nila, counterclockwise against clockwise and then upward and then downward. So my zero out siya, di ba? So you can connect the beam again. So what I should, so again, it's not really a scientific explanation, but you can just easily understand it. Okay. So if you want to understand it better, try try reading your book. So you have a lot of explanation there. So positive shear is when the left side is going upward and then the right side is going downward. That is what we call a positive shear. And negative shear is this one. So again, um, this one is just for the sake of uh, basic notations, but again, in actual practice, it's up to you on how you're going to assign your um, directions, whether upward is positive or downward is positive. Okay. So of course, um, if you can see on um, part A, it's actually a positive shear because the portion here is still affected by your first reaction only. Okay, so upward, downward, diba? Upward, and then this one is downward. So upward, downward. So that would be the shear. So again, um, your B and C doesn't pertain to the left and right side, but it pertains only to the cut section. So probably the behavior of this one would be this one. This would be the shearing effect. Okay. So again, it doesn't pertain to the left side and the right side of the cut portion of the beam. <clears throat> okay. So we have also the bending moment. So again, if we try to um, assign a, an equation for this one, on the left side, you're going to create a positive rotation clockwise. So again, take note of the equations that we have mentioned. So for on the left side of the cut portion, um, going up is always positive. And if you try to analyze the right portion, going down is always positive. Okay, so there are cases that wherein we have to um, analyze it on the right side because uh, probably the forces might be included on the right side, but if you try to use the left side, that particular force won't be included. So on a shift shift more from left to right. So again, try to just um, memorize the notations on the left side and the right side of the equation. So for the left side, for shear, 
going up is positive. On the right side of the cut portion, going down is positive. So for the moment, <clears throat> um, on the left side, summation of forces on the left side is positive counterclockwise. So clockwise. <clears throat> And then the other one on the right side would be counterclockwise. Um, let's try to so counterclockwise on the right side. So again, you just have, um, you just have to remember this kanalang siguro para. Um, you don't have to go through the confusion of whether you're assigning it as counterclockwise positive, clockwise as positive. So just memorize na lang siguro that on the left side, going up for shear is positive and clockwise is positive. Then for the right side of the beam, the cut portion would be going down is positive and then um, counterclockwise is positive. Okay, so this is the, what uh, what the positive moment looks like. So the bench downwards, that's what we call as positive moment. So if, so if it bends upwards, that would be a negative moment. So So, but most probably the behavior of most beams would be positive moment because again, all of the forces that act, acting upon the beam is all downwards. So, mga siya yung kwan, yung i, i try to remember. So, most likely all of the beams have a positive bending moment because, again, all of the forces are going downwards. So, tana magpatong is puro padong obos, di ba? Wala may magpatong padong babaw. Uh, probably na, but the force would, would, uh, due to gravity would still be going down, di ba? So, rare cases na kayo ng negative moment in. Um, actual practice in structural engineering. Okay. So sign convention. So again, it, to sum it up all, on the left side is this one going up and then counterclockwise direction is positive. <clears throat> Okay, so you might wonder why this one is positive moment and this one is positive shear. Because of course, we, you are using this equation. Diba? So let's say you're looking for M. Diba? So since all of the, of the figures on the left side is positive, so most likely the answer for this one is also positive. But take note that the, the, the direction would be the opposite of the one that you are um, solving for. Because again, as presented earlier, let's say you have a moment here and you have a reaction here. So even though that your answer here is positive, the direction would be the opposite of the one presented with the external force or moment. Okay, para mo counter axia. So again, even though that this one is positive, you have to make sure that the direction is opposite the given direction of the given force or moment. So again, equilibrium mga tong i-achieve, ha? Equilibrium. So same goes for the other one. So it's all positive because again, um, you are using the equation, di ba? So for example, this one is V and then this one is V also, di ba? So everything on the left side, since it's positive, that's why you have a positive answer, okay? So same goes on the right side of the beam. So still positive because again, everything declared on the left side of the equation are all positive values, regardless if there are other um, negative um, forces that is acting on that particular section of the beam. OK, 
Okay, so let's now and go to your shear and moment diagram equations. So probably this one is the real deal here in the uh, topic. So this one is the longer version of the shear and moment diagram because we'll be using equations before creating the, the graph or the graph for the shear and moment diagrams. Okay, so I think the best option for you to do is just to start this one immediately. There's no other way but to um, solve it directly, okay? So of course, the first thing that we need to do is we're going to solve for the reactions first. Sorry. So solving reaction, so summation moments, let's say R1 is equal to zero. Um, let's say it's counterclockwise at one positive since we are still solving for the reactions. Okay, so first one is we have, we're going to have a counter, I mean, rather a clockwise moment coming from the uniformly distributed 20 kilonewton per meter. So 20 kilonewton per meter. So times five and then times five over two because that would be the centroid of your distributed load. So sakto ba? Akong kwan? Akong statics? So next, uh, this one is would be negative since we're having a positive um, counterclockwise direction for the moment. So next is R2. So R2 times 10. Then lastly would be a counter, uh, would be a clockwise rotation for the 30 kilonewton load that would be negative. So 30 and then times that would be 14. And then equal to zero. So R2 would be, so try, please try to solve this one because I don't have my calculator with me. Sixty seven. Uh, how much? Sixty seven. Yes, sir. So sixty seven kilonewtons. The next would be summation of forces vertical is equal to zero. So this one would be positive going upwards. So we're going to have R one then minus the 20 kilonewton force, 20 times five, and then plus R2, which is 67, and then minus 30 kilonewton equal to zero. So we now have R1. Sixty-three, sir. So 63 kilonewtons. Okay, so after solving the reaction forces, what you need to do next is to create a section. <clears throat> so the next question would be how many sections we're going to create throughout the entire span of the beam. So since we have four letters, A, B, C, and D, so we can create three segments. So the first one would be cutting from this portion here, since again, we are analyzing internal shear and moment of your beam. So we take it segment by segment. So first one is the segment AB, and then the next one would be the segment ABC, because again, we're looking for, of course, the internal forces reacting inside BC with respect to A. And also this one, this portion here, member CD. So probably um, you can analyze it as 
Um, the first one would be coming from the left. We're going to analyze it on the left portion. The next would be still coming from the left because segment BC, uh, segment BC doesn't have any, um, let's say, any other force presented in the middle part. <clears throat> And then probably segment CD, you can just try to analyze it on the right side because we need to include 30 kilonewtons in our equation. But because if you try to analyze your member CD on the left portion, so notice that if I analyze it in this direction, so Dilimap will see 30 kilonewtons, but if I'm going to analyze it on the left portion. So that's why the best thing to do is to analyze member CD on the right side because we need to include the 30 kilonewton force. So I think that's the advantage of having the left, analyzing the left portion and the right portion of the cut for, of, your, of your segment beam. Okay, so to start off, we analyze first the member in AB. So if you try to draw it again, Okay, so let's say this one is the cut section. Then this one, R1 would be, let's say R1, let's say R1. And then this would be the distributed load. Then let's say that the distance of the cut portion is X. Right? Again, this one is 20 kilonewton per meter. So to create the shear moment first, <clears throat> uh, shear equation first. So again, our designated equation from the left portion of the segment of the cut section would be positive is going up, then summation of forces uh, vertical or on the left side, right? that would be the equation, is equal to V. Okay, so in other words, this would be um, so R1 would be 63, so going up, and then minus, so this one is 20 times x times x over 2 is equal to v. So in other words, v is equal to. 63 minus 10 x squared. So this would be the, 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 the shear equation on the first segment of your beam. So that would be um, from A to B. So para di mo maglibog, you can also write it in this manner, V, then from A to B. So 63 minus 10 x squared. So I think the purpose of um, having this equation is that if you um, if you want to determine the shear on a particular distance, let's say at two meters, so you can so you can determine that particular shear using this equation. Right? So again, this is only true for the span of zero to five meters. So up until five meters only because we are only analyzing segment PC, okay? So why labot si Kwan pa? Why labot ang other segments of the beam? So this would be our um, uh, equation for the shear uh, equation. Okay, so let me try to add a slide first. Okay, so medyo na sobra ko analyze. So this one should only be 20x. 
So it's not 10x squared. So uh, we are still solving for the shear there. And what I did was to get the moment on it too. So just 20x, okay. Uh, so solving for next now is the shear. Uh, in other the moment, so moment equation. So again, on the left portion of the cut sec of the sec of the cut section would be clockwise would be positive. So summation of moments would be equal to on the left side would be equal to zero, diba? Ah, uh, it would be equal to m. <clears throat> okay, so summation moments on the left side would be equal to M. So starting off with um, R1, so that would be 63. So paliyo maglibog, just try to imagine that you're taking moments on this portion here. So 63 times x, then minus 20 times x times x over 2 is equal to m. So simplifying your equation, m is equal to 63x minus 10x squared. So again, both of these equations only is true, only it is true in the range of zero to five distances. So only on segment AB. So again, you can try to write it as MAB or A, uh, A, A Alright, so that would be the first segment. So pinaka first muna siya. So we still have two more segments to go, which is on the B portion and on the C portion. Okay, so so far do you have any questions before we proceed with the next segment? So far, sir. Okay, so. <clears throat> okay, so next is we go to. So uh, try to remember this equation. Uh, try to write it down first. Or um, let's just try to get back to these equations later. Okay, gamit it later on when we try to determine our shear and moment equation. Shear and moment equation diagram. Okay, so let's try another. So again, we try to cut it on the B portion. So this would be our new x value. So again, the left side would be positive. Then summation of forces on the left on vertical on the left side would be equal to the shear. So you have R1, so R1 times x. So uh, it's not really times x, but it's just r1 only. And then plus, uh, rather minus, 20 times 5. So looking at the cut portion, there's no other forces presented that can be represented as x, right? Because 20 can now be multiplied by 5 since it covers the span in the x distance going towards your segment PC, right? So again, there are, there are no forces that can be involved with the variable x. 
So meaning we can say that the shear in uh, segment PC can have a numerical value, meaning wala siya equation. So this means that this one is 63. 63 ba ito na? Ah, R1. And then minus, this one is minus 100. So the shear in your second member or second cut portion would be equal to so that would be negative 37. Okay, so this would be for the cut portion of your segment. So shear is yeah, shear. So meaning we don't have to plug in values of x later on since the shear in segment PC has a numerical value already. So how about for the moment? Let's try to look for the moment. So positive moment on, on the left side is equal to M. Okay, so again, for you not to be confused when taking moments, so try taking moments on the cut portion so that you can try to analyze it in a better aspect. So R1 will create a positive moment clockwise. So R1, so this time is since we are having an X value here, so times X, okay. And then minus 20 times five, okay. And then the distance going towards um, your uh, moment here would be pila naman. So 20 times five, and then going towards the middle portion, let's say 2.5 here. So that would be? Five over two. Sir. So five over two, and then diba, moment arm are you multiply, diba? So it's about the moment arm. Is it 2.5? Five. So this would be our, our moment arm would be X minus 2.5. So notice that this one is X. Huh? So let me try to draw it in a better. Okay, so this one is X divided by X. Then let's say this one is uh, 2.5. This one also is 2.5. Okay, so our moment arm going towards the, the cut section would be this portion. Diba? So in some ways, unknown distance. So that would be x minus 2.5. Okay, x minus this distance is equal to this distance. Okay. So this would be x minus 2.5 or let's say 5 over 2 is equal to m. So meaning m is equal to 63x then minus 100 x minus 5 over 2. So notice that we have a distance here. So again, um, since we have a we have an equation for the moment in segment PC, so this pertains to zero going towards the 10 meter distance. Uh,
Or rather, this one is pertaining to the distance between 5 and 10. So 5 and then going towards the 10 distance. So meaning it's only um, exclusive on these distances. So since since it's by segment, by segment, yeah. So 0 to 5, 5 to 10, and then 10 to 14, okay? So next is the last portion would be the member CD. So let's try a different color. So if we, if we try to cut it on this portion here, so again, it's the best thing to do is to cut it on the right, uh, analyze it on the right side since we need to include the 30 kilonewton force um, exerting on member CD. Because if we try to analyze it on the left portion, we are going to have the same solution for segment PC, the one in the green um, ink on your screen. That's for segment PC. Uh, try to write PC here. Okay. So um, if you try to analyze it again, notice that um, in member, if you try to analyze it on the left portion, the 30 kilonewton force would not be included in the equation. So meaning, we, we still have to evaluate it later. So para mas complete siya, so of course we analyze it on the right side. And this would be our x value. Okay, so going downwards is now positive since we're analyzing on the right side. F Y R is equal to the shear. So um, 30 kilonewton is equal to V. So V C D is equal to 30 kilonewtons. So this one is right? Because there's no other possible value for this one. <clears throat> And then for the moments, so again, you take moments on the cut section here. So again, counterclockwise is now the positive moment on the right side of the cut portion. So M sub R is equal to the moment. So we have here a negative moment since this one is counterclockwise. I mean, it's clockwise rather. So 30 times x is equal to m. So m c d is equal to negative 30 x. And again, this is only true for the distance of 0 to 4. So again, since we are analyzing from the right side, so other segments, right? So meaning it's just from zero towards the four distance. And that's how you analyze your um, shear and moment equations, okay? So to draw your shear and moment diagrams, so let me write first the different equations as per what we have discussed so far. So for segment AB, um, a, B. So shear is equal to, and then moment A, B, and then segment B, C. So you have shear uh, B, C, and then moment B, C. And lastly is uh, segment C, D, then we have shear at C, D, and then moment at B, C. So this one is just um, 30 kilonewtons. This one is negative 30x. Yes, sir. 
I'm sorry. So for BC is um, 63 minus 100. Ah, at the value, di ba? 67, ito na? Negative 37 po, sir. Negative 37. 37. So, negative 37 kilonewton. And then, for the moment, that would be... Um, let me check na lang, ah. Ah, there. So, 63x minus 100. Ah, kwag okay. X there. So sixty three X minus one hundred X minus five over two. Then for moment A B A. So 63x minus 10x squared. Then this one is 63 minus um, 20x squared. 20x squared or 20x? 20x squared. Okay. So that's your different shear and moment equations for your different segments of your B. So next is we have to draw now the shear and moment equation. So all you have to do is to just try to extend the A and B portion, yeah, the, the letter parts, they're the segmented parts. So this one, try to extend it. So B and then C. So then the first one is we try to draw a horizontal line. So this would be for your shear diagram first. And then later on the bottom part of it would be the moment diagram. So again, this one is the long method because we are analyzing it using the shear and moment equations. So let's try to solve first the shear equation. So again, um, for segment AB, this is for, from distance from zero to five. So at zero, so um, if you try to use the shear equation first, so at zero, meaning the shear is equal to at zero distance, our shear is equal to 63. So let's say this one is 63. Diba? 63 kilonewtons. So again, since it's positive, it's on the upper part of the horizontal line. So next is at five meters. So how much is your shear at five meters? Negative 37. So negative 37. So let's say this one is negative 37. So notice that our negative 37 is already the negative 37 in segment BC. So meaning our equation is correct, diba? So notice that in in segment BC, since it's negative 37 all throughout the span of 5 to 10 meters, diba? Kaya dili man siya equation, diba? Wala siya value sa x. So meaning it's not changing in every meter. So meaning, Anna, it's still 37 at the end of the 15 meter mark. So that's still negative 37 kilonewtons. And then on the right portion is 30 kilonewtons. So uh, 30 kilonewtons, uh, CD. So delete, yes, sir, yes, sir. Yes, sir. 30. So 30, na? 
Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So 30, di ba? So this one is 30. Um, it's a... Let's try to check. Okay, so it's 30. So again, it's 30 all throughout. Ah, uh, na to ogon. So let's say this one is 30. So di pa na siya drawn to scale ha. Alam kayo mag super strict lang sa aron. Okay. So again, 63 going towards 37. So that would be the... So this one is is changing, di ba? And then on segment BC, since it's 37 kilonewtons all throughout the 5 to... Uh, this one is 10 there. 5 to 10 meter mark since it's constant shear, meaning it's straight line. Diba? And then notice that it's 30 kilonewtons up. So notice that our reaction in um, our reaction in R2 is 67, diba? So meaning... 37 plus 67, that would be give us 30, diba? And the last one would be 30 kilonewtons. Since this one is shear, diba? constant shear, diba? this one is constant shear all throughout, it's still a 30, it's not changing. And then 30 going down, since we have a vertical load on the end, it is zero. So, ano na siya pag sa yung shear and moment diagram? Uh, this one is shear pa dahi. Okay, so dapat ma zero siya. If this siya ma zero, meaning there's something wrong with your equation. Then you have to have this one. Uh, mag h h mo dia sa mag batang mag hatching. Or at least nindot tanaw ninyo hang shear equation. So usually, what's the purpose of having this diagram? So for example, on one simple glance, I can say that the shear is changing from the first five meters. So having a positive shear, it gradually creates a negative shear at the five meter mark, diba? So nai decline in shear. So totally not decline because that's not a proper term, Siguro, but there's a change in uh, behavior of shear. So from positive going towards the negative. So it's not really decline because probably on decline is for, let's say rates or percentages, but for shear, since we are talking about the behavior of the material, so probably um, will change yeah, from positive to negative. Then from segment PC, since we have a straight line, so again, this is according to the solved equation earlier. Diba? This one. So we have a constant shear all throughout member BC, and it verifies that it's constant because there is no force on member BC. Okay. So same goes for your segment CD. It's constant 30 kilonewtons, but there is no force in between C and D. We have a 30 kilonewton force, but it's at the end of your member CD. And again, what you have to take note on the on the on another note is it must be closed out. Dapat must zero out when you hang shear diagram. So same goes for your moment diagram as well. Okay. Okay, so for so that would be for the shear. Diagram. So, any questions before we proceed with the moment diagram? So, 
so medyo mas ina overwhelm na no but i tell you mas dali jud ang kan mas dali ang shortcut compared sa kaning share moment aspect but of course you can appreciate the concept behind the shortcut because since kibaw na mo sa basic which is kan eh kan equations later on dali lang kayo ang shortcut Okay, so no questions. So let's proceed with the, the moment diagram. Okay, so take note also of this location here. Kaning murag na zero out ang shear. So probably you can solve that one later using um, ratio and proportion. So triangle here, triangle one. This one is triangle number two. So you can solve for the unknown distance of your shear aspect. Or you can also try to solve it using the equation. Okay. So going back to the moment equation. So we are now going to the moment. So at zero, so 63, 63 times zero, then 10 minus zero squared would give us zero. Okay. So I think um, before we are, we have to solve for the five meter distance, we need to solve the distance that creates a zero shear because that would create a maximum moment in the aspect of the moment diagram. So again, how you're going to solve this one is you're going to solve it using um, similar triangles. So let's say you're going to have it as 63 and then this one would be the X value. Then how about for the other triangle? So the other triangle would be, so 63 plus 37. So you need to create a larger triangle. So Anisha, larger triangle. And then this one would be five meters and then the left side would be um, 100. 63 plus 37 is 100 now 100? Yes, sir. So 100. So the ratio proportion, the value of X would be So it would be 3.15. So just try to verify that one. Okay, so at 3.15, so let's now try to plug in 3.15 on this equation. So 63 times 3.15 minus 10 times 3.15 squared. So pila mo na ang value ana. What was it? Tim? Can you repeat that? Uh, this one, this equation here, and then plug plug in the three point fifteen uh, meters. Ninety nine point two two five, sir. So ninety nine point. So let's say this one is ninety nine point two two five. Okay, so the next one is you plug in now five meters. Sixty-five, sir. Pila? Sixty-five. So sixty-five. So let's say this one is sixty-five. So again, this is kilonewton per meter. Kilonewton per meter. So in the moment diagram, so most likely instead of a straight line, since we are more on the curvy aspect. So if it's going downwards, um, it would be in a concave shape. Kanang shape 
sakto ba concave may tawag na or convex so wala na siya wala siya ng bukid ba na bukid then going downwards okay so mga ana siya and then after creating the first diagram so next is we try to create now segment bc's diagram so plugging in first the 5 meter mark so again, you see, uh, you use this equation now. Okay, so how much if we plug in five and then 10? And is co answer negative 120. So negative 120. Yes, sir. So let's say this one is negative 120. So, so five meters is still the same, right? Sir. For the five meters, it's still the same. That would be mm -hmm. 65 still. So so if it sticks, um, if it's still 65, so meaning our first equation for the moment of AB would be correct because it took much as a 65 sa equation on the segment BC. Okay, so since this one is just, um, I think on how you can draw your moment diagram. So if you have a declining line here, it's not horizontal. So meaning the next, um, masamar na siya transition sa drawing. So, ako na explain later. Ah. So, this would be a straight line going towards negative 120. And then for moment BC, so that would be times 4. Okay. So, negative 30x times 4, that would be negative 120, right? Yes, sir. So meaning Anna, it zeroes out towards the end because you are going to have the same value. Okay, so this would be your moment diagram so probably on on how to create the different um why is it curve on the on the moment diagram is it still straight on the other aspect so i think the the arrangement of or let's say the order of the drawing would be if you're going to have a a uh, let's say a concentrated load so usually we're going to have a box region for the shear. Then the next portion would be, the moment would be an inclined version. Now, if you're going to have a distributed load first, then you're going to have it an, an, an inclined version, then the moment would be a curve one. So, magana na siya yung method sa kwan. So especially if the load is, let's say, triangular. So meaning the moment would be, I mean, the shear would be now curved because this one is diagonal already. So concentrated, straight, curve, ah, concentrated, uh, uniformly distributed. Uh, trend. If incline mo, the next one would be curve. Ana na siya. If a straight line, the next one is curve. Anna. So I think it's found in your book on how to get the convention of your curve, especially if it's upward. So I think it would be now convex or concave. So just try to 
read your book on how to analyze your different um, patterns sa inyong kuhan. But so far, ismo dyan na siya ang kuhan dyan, ang process dyan. So, try to have an etching or hatching sa inyong kuhan. I think mo dyan akong dili malimtan sa akong college teacher na. Sa mga place before is dapat dyan yung mag dyan para para daw nilutan ako ng buwan ang shear and moment equation. So that would be your shear and moment equation. So again, on the last part of the moment diagram, so even though that, that is not zero, so ma zero out siya because again, since this one is confirmed on the this one, at 10 meters, uh, let's say at 4 meters, because this one is from 0 to 4. So at 4 meters, meaning going towards the 4 distance, which is, at, which is point C, since we again, we analyze segment BC on the right side. So we start our 0 on D, going towards C, diba? At 4 meter distance is at C. So at 4 meters, it's negative 120, diba? And of course, you can also analyze it visually that the end portion here doesn't have a moment, diba? It, it has a vertical load, but it, it doesn't have a moment because it's a free end, diba? Free end, yeah. Wala siya, dili siya fixed or dili siya restrained. So unless siguro na naigibotang dere ng external force na moment dere sa problem. But again, the figure doesn't have any moment, external moment. So meaning the last portion would be zero. So kanina is not a 30 uh, external load. That's why 30 on C, then straight towards D, 30 sa, again, shear diagram. Then in siya 30 towards zero because we have an external load of 30. All right, so I think mo na siya ang And to look for to verify our answer, so these are the equations. So this is for segment AB. So I uploaded already the PowerPoint of this one. So in you have canvas, so try to check it out. So at x equals zero and then x equals five is negative 37. So sayaha is ilang gisolve da anan ang mga values at x equals zero and then x equals five. For moment equation, this is the moment equation. So this is still for segment AB. And this is for segment BC. So again, take note that from 5 to 10 meters, it is not changing. It is still negative 37 for the shear because again, um, the variable X doesn't apply in this segment. But for the moment equation, so the X variable now applies to segment BC. Okay, so when x is 5 meters, it's 65 kilonewton per meter, and then at 10 meters, it's negative 120. Okay, so this would be an alternate solution. But medyo, it's a bit confusing. So meaning ana is ni create siya o kuan kuan. Kaning hidden line here. Kaning yang gipuno dire. It's actually the the portion of B wherein there's no force. So meaning kaning siya nga portion dire. Is iyang gipunan og uniformly distributed load. Then iya sang gi counteract kan og the same amount 
on below going upwards ana okay para lang ma-complete niya og kan ma-complete niya og create ang distance x so muna siya ang purpose of um, extending so marsag sa mathematics kanin katong completing the square so whatever you add on the, whatever you add on the left you add also on the right so dire is whatever you add on the top portion you also add on the bottom portion opposite the direction para mo zero out siya okay so 65 is still negative 120 and then for segment cd that would be 30 all throughout the segment cd and then for moment equations uh, for CD, that would be negative 30. So again, there is no um, moment at, at uh, CD. And it verifies because if you try to replace zero, moment at the zero mark for, so again, this would be our zero mark. And then this would be our four mark. Four meter, zero meters, because we are going to the left. Okay, and then x at four meters would be a negative one twenty. So for our shear and moment diagram, so notice that this one is our shear and moment diagram. So just try to ignore the elastic curve because that one is another lesson, but you can try to see the the behavior of the of the material through the elastic curve okay so manisha tanan so any questions for the shear and moment equation None so far, sir. Okay, so for so you can try also solving this one later on. So this one is found in your notes. So you can just try to follow through with the notes that I uh, that I posted. So try to create your shear and moment diagram here in this problem. So again, as I note, as I mentioned earlier. If it's curve, I mean you have given load, so probably the shear would be curved na. Na curved na in yung shear, and then moment. So moment in you would be also curve. This one is horizontal, so probably the shear is straight line, then the moment would be curve na. Okay. This one is since there's no con here, there's no force in segment C D for probably straight here. Yeah. And then diagonal in yang moment. Okay. Okay, so try to review this one. And then on the next meeting, let's try to discuss next the shortcut version. So I won't be dealing with much on the other formats because it's still it's repetitive now. So I'm going to discuss next the shortcut for the shear and moment equation without creating the the equations. Okay, so questions before we end our session. Any instructions, but also regarding the the midterm examination, sir. Ah, uh, kato, just be online thirty minutes before, so probably at least you can set up your cameras. Uh, I'm going to post the uh, the guidelines uh, announcement. So probably it's just on the camera setting, na siguro, and when you're going to be online, then. And more general stuff for uh, the guidelines. Okay, so again, coverage for the midterm exam is everything up until 
indeterminate members. Uh, in, so, ito ba? Indeterminate na kan? Itong atong gidiscuss before this topic. So, kanina share mo, Metis, wala na siya labot. Torsion, sir. Ha? Huh? Torsion. Oh, torsion, torsion. Okay, sir. So, wala labot ning kan, share in moment. So probably expect about four problems, three to four problems. So I think sakto na siguro siya for two hours, di ba? 30 minutes per problem. Okay, so any other concerns? Open notes, four. Monsieur Sam. Oh, open notes. Thank you, sir. So, open tanan. <coughs> At least makatabang sa tanin niya. Kasi mara ako na stress po ko sa kaninga schedule ka ng tuiga kahit tungod sa bagyo gani. Mara wala kayo ko ka naging properly discuss sa mga ko. Kaya nag-apas na sa time ba. Sige, so if I think if there's no question, I think we can end our session here and I'll try to post the recording later para for those who weren't able to join our class today.